Hey kids, this is the Drive to School Podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and uh, we are going to talk about some of the things that you might see in church. And if you go to church this Sunday, you might hear something weird called Septuagesima, which is like Latin for about 70 days till Easter. Uh, it's sort of like this pre-Lent uh, uh, season that, that sort of is it's put in that place so that Lent doesn't just like sneak up on you and like all of a sudden it's just time to be real sad. Uh, but instead we get to sort of transition from the transfiguration where we see God in power and mercy to God in mercy and weakness on the cross on Good Friday. And so if you are going to church this day, you might hear a parable about a very uh, weird business that where the, the, the master of the, the, the farm, he goes out at the beginning of the day, hires a bunch of people, and he just keeps going out every hour and brings people in. But at the end of the day, he pays everybody the same, even the people who barely worked even an hour. And everybody gets real upset. And it's sort of a nice feeling because I can sort of walk away from reading the Bible and realize that I'm way better at business than God, um, which maybe is, well, a sign to back up because I might be doing this wrong. See, God is bad at business. He pays everybody the same, even the ones who barely do anything. It's not profitable. It's just generous, which is sort of the point. God wants everybody in, not about the people who earned what. It's not about how many things that you have done. It's not about how long you have been there. It's about grace, the undeserved gift of God. If you have worked for it, if you are entitled to it, it's not grace. If you think going to church more often earns you more, it's not grace. If you think being a Christian longer, it's not grace. If you think doing more things, it's not grace. If you think being a better person, it's not grace. Whatever you have done, whenever you have showed up, you are welcome here. Your God wants you in your church. He invites you to your church and he loves you in your church. Whether you have been going there all your life or you snuck in at your deathbed, your Lord loved you and he he wants you in his kingdom so much that he paid your way to get there by dying on the cross. It's one of those things that I think we get because like I have never actually heard anybody insist that they should get more heaven than somebody who was brought into the faith at the 11th hour. I have never seen anyone all that upset to hear about a baptism of an adult and a new member of the church or somebody in the hospital room deathbed who was brought back to the faith after years of being apart from it. All of heaven rejoices for stuff like that and we tend to sing along. But as somebody who was a little bit late to the party, I just sometimes wonder if it's more because people want me to share in the work than the Father's generosity. You, you are absolutely welcome here because, well, there's, there's lots to do and you're not too old to do it yet. It actually starts to turn all of the youth groups into an uncomfortable thing where uh, everybody who's ever served on a board is circling all of our youth group like vultures circling a carcass because they have been on those boards and committees for years. And what they see is the next generation of organists and trustees and elders and all of the people who are going to need to carry this thing forward. And honestly, if they could just hurry up and start, that's great because I've been on this committee for like 20 years and I just want to sit at home on a Tuesday night and not go to a meeting. There are committees, there are boards, there is budgets, there is tithing, there is work to do. And somewhere down the road, I kind of think we sort of fell off the other side of the horse when it comes to this parable. See, in the parable, the workers, they got the work of the day done, but they were upset about how the father chose to pay everyone. And I think maybe today, the people are fine with the father paying everyone, but they're upset because they're afraid the work of the day isn't going to get done. And in both places, we took our eyes off of mercy. The first thought that they earned it. The groups today just really never gave that much thought compared to how much there is to do around here. I would actually be a pretty good businessman if I could find a way to get a nickel. Every single time there was talk about getting folks more involved in church with everything in the church that doesn't give the forgiveness of sins. We need their help. We need your help. We just need more help. It's not that that stuff doesn't matter. It does. Like, I, for one, really like receiving the stuff that forgives my sins with a roof over my head and air conditioning going and heat that works and an organ that's played and all of the things that are done. I I love that that's there. Um, I I like even just not having to worry about being a good businessman and having a nice side hustle in order to feed my family while I preach the gospel. We are supposed to be good stewards with the gifts that God has given us, but today's parable is a reminder why. It's Septuagesima, about 70 days until Easter, and we're getting ready for Lent, and so the text starts to shift us uh, towards that cross so that it doesn't sneak up on us. But I also just really think that it's a wonderful reflection because Well, when we stop looking at that cross, we start looking at all of the things of today. And well, your sins are forgiven because of the cross, not because all of the boards and committees are filled and operating at capacity. Your sins are forgiven because Jesus died for you, not because you tithe, not because you served on a committee or a board, 
not because of what you do at all. Your sins are forgiven because Jesus died on a cross. So even if those things aren't getting done, there is still the forgiveness of sins for you. The father goes out into the marketplace and grabs everyone without any qualification, but that they're there. And he makes promises to them. He brings in people and pays the ones who bore no burden of the day, the very same as those who have. And it looks utterly foolish because I'm a better businessman than God. But maybe I'm looking at the wrong things because I am looking at what needs to get done today and how to most efficiently do it. And God is looking for mercy to give mercy to sinners. The father just keeps going out to get more and more sinners and he pays them the same, not because there is more work to be done, just because, well, there's more people that he wants to give mercy to. He pays them all the same according to his goodness and it might be a sign that, well, we should be more focused on receiving mercy than just getting the work done. It's not that all of those things don't matter. They do matter, but they serve, well, a comfortable place to have the gospel preached. But here's the thing. Here's the wonderful, wonderful thing about it. The sins are forgiven because Jesus died. Everybody gets paid the same because Jesus is merciful. It all got done despite all of the mess going on on Good Friday. And if the mess is still going on today and we're terrified that there won't be enough people to do all the things that need doing in church, maybe we'll leave that up to the Father's mercy too. It'll never actually look all that clean because we are better at business than God, but he is way better at mercy than us. And that's a good thing. So in the midst of all of the things going on in church, if you are a, a kid that's already fending off requests to join the trustees, recognize just not that those things aren't important, but where your mercy comes from. Look to the Father's generosity and realize that it, it's going to work itself out because while well, the Father just sort of insists on it, he keeps gathering more in, giving them the gifts of salvation. And so we can be at peace. Go to church this Sunday, get some mercy.